I'm Tom Downey. Follow me on Twitter at WhatGoingDowney for more Cowboys coverage. We just kind of mentioned it a little bit ago. Let's dive into the complete list of the Cowboys' official pre-draft visits. Now, some sites have 26, some have 28. I put all those media sites together. I think I found the actual 30 the Cowboys used. We'll make note of the four guys that might not technically be official visits because not every outlet had them as an official visit. We'll dive in now with the halfback, Naheem Hines of NC State. A burner, 40-yard dash with a 4.38, best among halfbacks this year. Cowboys have shown a ton of interest in Hines. If he's on the board in round four, maybe that, that late fourth round pick, I think he will be the pick for the Dallas Cowboys. If they don't get Hines, Ido Smith is a prime option for the Cowboys on day three, later on day three. A little undersized, but had great production at Southern Miss. Is quick and elusive, can catch the ball, as you see there with his stats. A little undersized, a little bit of wear, but he'd be a nice number two halfback behind Ezekiel Elliott to kind of fill a more traditional pass-catching role on third downs. Antonio Callaway, one of the guys the Cowboys have brought in, this strikes me more as a fact-finding mission for the Dallas Cowboys because Callaway is an incredibly talented player here. The big issue is for Callaway is the massive off-the-field red flags. Antonio Callaway, if it was based only on talent, would probably be at least a round two pick, but all the off-field red flags, he's going to be off the board for a lot of different players. Next up is Doris Fontaine, who is not going to be a round one or round two pick, but he could sneak into the latter part of day two, or more likely on day three. A great athlete, had a very impressive pro day. That's kind of what got him noticed, but he needs polish, and there are quite a bit of level of competition concerns for Fontaine as well. Some more receivers, one we just mentioned a little bit ago, Marcel Aitman out of Oklahoma State. Look, he's got the great size, great production out of that Oklahoma State offense that lit apart terrible Big 12 defenses. But he was reportedly a late visit in terms of sense since he just came in right before the, the deadline, and he's not a very good athlete. I think he's a mid-round pick at best for the Cowboys. On to some potential first-round options. We lead off with DJ Moore, a very similar identic profile as, D, as Sammy Watkins. Didn't do a ton deep downfield because Maryland's quarterbacks were terrible. And a fun fact for you on DJ Moore, since Hakeem Nix, Moore is the only other wide receiver at the college level to put up 1,000 yards in a season while his top quarterback didn't even reach 1,500. So Moore put up great production despite having terrible quarterback play. Was a big surprise at the NFL Combine. He is firmly in the mix for the Cowboys' first round pick at number 19 or if they trade down. Speaking of receivers, Calvin Ridley will keep it rolling here with the first-round options. Very pro-ready. He will make an instant impact for whatever NFL team drafts him. The issue is, at least for me, he's not exactly an elite athlete. And the other big concern I have, he's going to turn 24 in his rookie year. That's older than you want out of a wide receiver. The good news is he doesn't have a big learning curve ahead of him. One guy who does have a bit of a learning curve ahead of him is Cortland Sutton. He is still very raw in areas, including his route running. He got by at SMU because he was bigger and faster than all those tinier defensive backs he played against. But he's got great size. He's a good athlete as well. If you want a true, quote-unquote, X receiver, that bigger-bodied outside guy, Cortland Sutton is probably your man. Another receiver the Cowboys brought in, because there were a lot of them for their official pre-draft visits, is James Washington. Look, he had great production. He was a big play machine and monster at Oklahoma State. The issue is he does not have great size, had a limited route tree, and I don't really know what his elite trait is. Is it he? because he's not the biggest guy, he's not the fastest guy, I don't know if he can thrive the same way he did at Oklahoma State as he could, as he will in the NFL. I think he has to adjust his game. To the offensive line we go now. Cole Madison, he's up next. Cowboys brought him in for an official pre-draft visit. Was a right tackle at Washington State, but could move inside to guard in the NFL. He strikes me more as a early day three at, at most pick for the Cowboys. We'll keep it rolling with some more offensive linemen here. James Daniels is the interior guy the Cowboys brought in for a pre-draft visit. Can play guard or center. I think he's better at center, but for the Cowboys, he would be a guard. A little undersized, but he is a great, great athlete. Desmond Harrison is up next, the kid out of West Georgia. He's had a very strange path to the NFL because he didn't play football for two years until he returned in 2017, was at Texas before that. He was at Juco, has some off-the-field concerns. Great athlete and has upside, but he's very raw and turns 26 as a rookie, so in reality, you're waiting until he's 27 for him to make an impact. That's not a guy I'm looking to spend an early round pick on at all. One guy I wouldn't mind is Mike McGlinchey. He would be a right tackle for the Cowboys, and that's his best fit anyway. 
I think he has issues against speed, had a bad game against Georgia, but the Cowboys take him at right tackle. It would mean Lael Collins kicks inside to left guard. Another offensive lineman is Colton Miller, and look, he's got great athlete for his size, but he's raw. He needs work as a blocker. I think he's a bit of a project. Reminds me of Nate Solder coming out. I wouldn't love this pick for the Cowboys unless he thought around two, which I don't think he's going to. This kind of seems like a, a potentially bad pick, or maybe the Cowboys trade down quite a way and they take Miller there. But much like McGlinchey, drafting Miller means Lael Collins goes back inside to guard. On to the defensive side of the ball now, Nathan Shepard. This is one of those guys I mentioned earlier that may or not have actually been an official pre draft visit, but we got to 30 by including Shepard here. There was one report that he was an official visit. That came after a private workout, so not quite set in stone, but we're going to count him here for purposes of this show. He had a great senior bowl, has the traits team once, but he's a little raw. He is 25, so again, a developmental guy that's, that's older, it's not, that's going to turn off some teams. Speaking of developmental guys, that's David Bryan in a nutshell. He's a freak athlete for his size. Very destructive would be a perfect three technique. Rod Marinelli would get the most out of him, but he's not have great production at Florida. Needs some work there. He might be a kind of sit and play in situational downs for the Cowboys in year one. I wouldn't love this pick at number 19 or in a trade down in the first round. Go address bigger needs. Cowboys also can get some one technique types. That includes Deron Payne. I think he's best as a run stuffer. But don't let his production fool you. We see just the one tackle for loss, one sack. He's a good athlete. He can do more than that. And that gives him some of those three tech qualities the Cowboys want in a DT that if they would take one in round one. Speaking of three technique qualities in a nose guard, that's Vita Vea in a nutshell, baby. He is very disruptive for a man of his size. He is a true three down nose guard. You don't find those type of players in most cases. I would love Vita Vea. The issue is... I don't think he'll be there for the Cowboys in round one. Another guy the Cowboys brought in was Breland Speaks. He's a very interesting fit for the Cowboys. He could be a three technique or a five technique, maybe a full on outside defensive end. He's a little undersized for a DTS and he's controlling his emotions as well, but he's versatile. He's a good athlete. Kind of thinking that in that Crawford mold, Tyron Crawford, could play defensive end or DT if needed. He could be an option in the mid rounds. Maybe he slides a little bit the Cowboys if they want to get somebody else, maybe eventually move Crawford back inside the DT, his natural position. Go figure. All right, Harold Landry up next here. Not great 2017, was hurt, limited by injuries, had an unreal 2016, though. He could be a real option for the Cowboys, and if Dallas does draft Landry in round one, might spell the end of DeMarcus Lawrence's time going forward. One more edge guy for you, that is Arden Key, and this, much like Antonio Callaway, strikes me as a fact-finding mission because Key had a great 2016 but then did not show up in 2017, was really, really at the NFL Combine, checked in below 240 pounds. He missed time to start the year. There's a shoulder injury. There's all kind of red flags with Arden Key. He's a good athlete, showed great play in 2016, but all those red flags will turn off teams. I think the Cowboys wanted to meet with him and figure out just how focused he is on football. On to the linebackers now. I know the YouTube guys will love this one because you guys don't want Leighton Van Esch, and I do get it a little bit there. Yes, he's productive and is a great athlete. Just the one year as a starter, though. Doesn't play up to his size either. I will say this, though, guys. I think the Cowboys are very high on Van Der Esch. Even with the needed receiver, if he's on the board at number 19, he just might be the pick. If it's not Van Der Esch at linebacker in round one, It'll probably be Rashawn Evans, a talented Alabama linebacker. He's not the athlete Van Der Esch is, but I think he's a better football player right now. I think Jason Garrett would love him, and he can play a couple of different spots with the Cowboys on that, in that linebacking core, and that's a big deal for Dallas. One more linebacker here we'll get to here is Darius Leonard, and we've got actually a few more coming up. Leonard is versatile, can blitz, he can cover a little bit, he's a good athlete. Doesn't have great size, doesn't play against the best competition because, again, South Carolina State. He could be a round three option for the Cowboys if Dallas does not go linebacker early on. Another potential day two, day three linebacker is Christian Sand, linebacker from Arizona. Was a very good tackler, doesn't have great speed, though. This is another guy that we'll mention. Some conflicting reports on if he was an official 30 visit. The Dallas News says he wasn't, but Ian Rapport said that he visited with the Cowboys. So take your pick there. We put all those guys, those guys that some said visited, some said didn't, and we got to 30. That's the magic number, so it made sense to us. 
On to the safeties now. No cornerbacks came in for official visits, by the way. Terrell Edmonds. You know of his brother, Tremaine. This is the other Edmonds in this year's draft class. A great athlete. Will help on special teams. He's just not quite as good as Tremaine Edmonds is. I don't think he's great in coverage. I think he's going to be best as a box safety, which, again, the Cowboys really need another one of those. The next guy here is not a box safety. This, this is Travarius Moore at a Southern Miss. He has been one of the biggest late risers in the draft. A great athlete, lit up his pro day. Very impressive there. The issue is just one year starting at the FBS level. I saw a lot of bad angles on tape as well, but he could legitimately be a day two pick. If the Cowboys want a free safety and they miss on, say, Justin Reed and Jesse Bates, Tavares Moore might be the next best option for Dallas. Another safety here is Tracy Walker, and I actually don't know if Walker's going to be a safety in the NFL. He's versatile, can do a little bit of everything, has a massive wingspan. Another strength, though, I think he could be a very talented press corner because he's so long. He can jam those receivers. A team like Seattle, for example, should like him as a cornerback there. I don't think he'll go to the Cowboys, but if he's on the board, let's say round five, round six, keep an eye out for him. Next up is Kazir White, and you may have known his brother, the Bears wide receiver Kevin White. The fun fact with White here for the Cowboys' perspective is I don't know if they actually view him as a safety. You can put him, let's say, 10 to 15 pounds, and he's built like a linebacker. He plays like a linebacker, but he or excuse me, he, he plays like a safety, but he runs like a linebacker, so he's a tweener in every in every way. I think the Cowboys in reality view him as a potential day three pick at linebacker. And then one more safety here for you guys, then we'll recap everyone in case you missed it. Ronnie Harrison. This was a, a late report uh, that said Harrison visited the Cowboys on the last day. Hadn't been reported anywhere else. It's kind of under the radar a little bit more, if it's accurate, of course. Ronnie Harrison, the combo safety. He hits hard. I don't think he's a true free safety, but I think he makes sense for the Cowboys if they're looking for a day two pick. If he lasts, I don't know if he will. He could also be a trade down target. Maybe you get two early second round picks. Spend a receiver slash linebacker and then take Harrison as well. Just keep an eye on Harrison if Dallas moves down in round one. All right, folks, let's recap all those players we just broke down, all 30 of them this year for the Cowboys on those pre-draft visits. Two halfbacks, Naheem Hines and Ido Smith, and then a whole bunch of wide receivers, Antonio Callaway, Doris Fontaine, Marcel Aitman, DJ Moore, Calvin Ridley, Corton Sutton, James Washington, and then five offensive linemen, Cole Madison, James Daniels, the aging but raw and athletic Desmond Harrison, Mike McGlinchey, Colt Miller, then multiple defensive linemen. Nathan Shepard came in, Taven Bryan checked in, Deron Payne checked in, Vita Vea was also a pre-draft visit, Breland Speaks, the kid at Ole Miss, was one as well, and then some uh, quite a few lists of other players. Arden Key was on there as well, Harold Landry was on there to the linebackers now, Leighton Van Der Esch, Rashawn Evans, Darius Leonard, and Christian Sam as well, another little pre-draft riser. And then five safeties, although maybe some change positions. Terrell Edmonds, Tavarius Moore, Tracy Walker, Kazir White, and Ronnie Harrison.